born on a Saturday as well, but you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. Aries, you're an Aries. Yes, I am. And you dreamt you were married to Alan Titchmarsh. I did. Yes, thank you very much. Take a seat, go. I've made a living out of giving the impression that I have paranormal abilities, but I don't. In my work, I use a mixture of magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection, and showmanship. But there are people who do claim to have paranormal abilities. As a magician, I love this promise of a mystery I can't explain. I'm also aware of how easily we can fool ourselves. So while I'm approaching this series ready to be convinced, I am aware that big claims need big evidence. <laughs> And few claims come as large as those of the Bronikoff Method, a psychic program that has its eyes set on world domination. <laughs> this is footage of students of the method. It purports to show people who are seemingly able to see, even though blindfolded. Some critics say it's fakery, but practitioners say they've developed extraordinary psychic powers, including the ability to see without using their eyes. Level three is, is extremely valuable for people who have no eyesight. The founder of the method is a charismatic Ukrainian, Vyacheslav Bronikov, who believes that his method will create a new Superman and everyone can benefit. Amongst their most intriguing claims is that they can teach the blind to see, even those without eyes. Rostov-na-Donu, it's a city in Russia. There is a boy and he was born without his eyeballs. Nobody told him he was blind and he can see better than you. Think about it. We can make blind people see who haven't got any eyes. I'm in Holland, where the Bronikov method is making its first foray into Western Europe. For me to test the system, I need the help of a blind person. So with me is British woman Judy Dunk. She's chair of St. John's Guild, a charity for the blind elderly, and has been blind herself since 1995, as she told me when we met in London shortly before our trip to Holland. It did take nearly six months to discover what it was, because right. um, it is quite rare. Um, and then she sort of said, right, you'll go blind by the time you're 40. And that horrified me. But blind doesn't mean black, which is yes. what I thought it did at that time. You can be registered blind, but it doesn't mean that you can't, you can't see anything. See anything. Yeah. Very, only 3% of blind people can't see anything at all. Judy has limited sight, and from time to time she uses a wheelchair for a back condition. She demonstrates the level of her sight for me by writing what she can see of a word that I've written, held up for her by her carer, Margaret. Uh, it's not rude. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I don't know what you've written. What's the word? Envelope. Oh, envelope. envelope. There you go. That says envelope. Yeah. So that's tricky, <laughs> Now, if isn't it? you actually mm. transfer that to everything that I look at... Yes. ..then you've got some idea of, just, of how I see things. This is the baseline from which any improvement in Judy's sight must be measured. Although she shares my scepticism, Judy is intrigued by the claims made for the Bronikoff method. Well, there is one phrase on the website, on their website, yeah. that actually states, we can make blind people see who haven't got any eyes. We'll give it a go and we'll see. Um, so, Darren, what do we know about this man, Mr Bronikoff? Uh, not a huge amount. He's a very elusive character. He, uh, he has a real legend around. Slightly kind of Rasputin-esque, I think. Yeah. Our first stop is this former church near Amsterdam. It is to be the first Bronikoff school for the blind where partially sighted people will be taught to see. The school will be run by a blind couple, Jan and Tina Visser. Tina claims to have already benefited from the method. What is your aim for having the Bronikoff Centre here? Oh, for the centre, of course, the awareness, I think, is very important. Mm. And it's a, a big adventure to see how far you can go. Mm. Well, 
let's go for uh, try and see some things. Yeah. I already saw colors. What's your experience of it? Yeah, uh, the, the same uh, like Tina with mm -hmm. the colors, with co colored paper. I told you, uh, I saw it in just in front of me, and also uh, with some sh uh, shapes. Mm -hmm. You're talking about actual physical vision when you're saying you're seeing colours? Yeah, there were colours around me. I was in it. I, it was completely around me. Oh, Whoa! Fantastic. And it was very emotional. I can imagine that. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. It sounded wonderful. I was aware of Charles Bonnet syndrome, where blind people can convincingly hallucinate. But was this something else? I was intrigued. What would you, at a very personal level, hope to gain from using the Bronikoff method? Well, everybody's expecting me to say, uh, I guess, I want to see. No, 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 no. <laughs> but this longing is not so strong in me because I'm so uh, used to, to who I am and how yeah. I live. And, but of course, it's so interesting, and that's a weak word, exciting mm -hmm. to, to explore. Right. So, yes, I hope to make progresses, of course. <laughs> Tina and Jan are keen to show me what it is to be blind. Yeah, you trust me? Yeah, yeah, trust okay. you. Okay, come on. <laughs> They've designed a kind of everyday obstacle course in which sighted people are plunged into darkness and taught how the other senses come into play. Right here, yes. the birds, it just sort of smells and it all seems very nice. It was extraordinary. I could tell, for example, the shape and size of my environment just through sound. Yeah, yeah. And I was guided through different soundscapes from parks to busy roads. Very good. notice how much you are noticing yes. without noticing that you're noticing you know is it uh -huh. just just to be aware of what you can what mm. you can pick up that you mm -hmm. just simply don't bother paying attention to mm. but also just an insight into into your world i know that's mm -hmm. sort of obvious but mm -hmm. um, there's a big difference between sitting down with somebody who's blind yes and then suddenly feeling very close to you in there and kind of mm -hmm. feeling like we're both we're both sort of sharing this, and it's a very different, it's a very different thing. Now I wanted to know if the Bronikoff method's claim of training the blind to see will be fulfilled for Judy when we attend their four-day course. <laughs> we will take part in the beginner's course, level one. Although we're here to test the Bronikoff method's claim to create a world without blindness, this psychic system actually sells itself as a method of human development offering uses in wider medicine, finance, even architecture. In fact, on the courses I'll be attending, only a tiny percentage of people are actually blind. According to the Bronikov's proponents, over 300,000 people worldwide have taken the course. And it's not cheap, starting at nearly 700 euros for level one. The course is being taught by Vladimir Bronikov, the son of the founder and the man featured in the publicity material. But these could just be simple tricks, and there have been accusations that they're achieved just by looking down the side of the blindfold or even through small holes at it. Certainly, many conjurers perform far more impressive blindfold stunts. Vladimir has been shown having difficulty replicating these feats when the possibility of cheating is removed. One of the leading figures in the movement is Peter Kamp, a Dutch technology expert who had tried to explain to us how the system works using a Hollywood-style analogy. And let's make a short step to the film The Matrix. In the Matrix. I like the Matrix, yeah. It's a nice movie, isn't it? It's yeah. a really cool movie. And we like it a lot. Because it explains what we do. Okay. It explains what it is. Only they do it a little bit slightly different than we do. So we've got a material world. So when we look outside, I see your body, I see yours, I see a cameraman, I see this board. This is in the material world. Mm -hmm. yeah? When we dream, we are in a non material world. And there's a world in between which is reality we call it. When Nano was a computer nerd in the Matrix, he was in this world. 
Then he took a pill and he moved to this world. And there he is, he's trained in all kinds of things like martial arts and he used it when he came back in this world. We don't shift bodies, but we only shift consciousness. So when we put on our blindfolds, our masks, we move to this space, we trained here and we turn it off again and we are back here. That's what the Matrix is. You stay in Wonderland. The movie's dystopian vision of a future world in which the protagonists shuffle painfully between different levels of reality reflects much of what the followers of the method believe they are able to achieve using only their minds. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. From this rather eccentric start, things got stranger, as Peter went on to explain that the method has 18 levels, only three of which have been worked out. Mm -hmm. Level one teaches students how to generate the energy necessary to apply the Bronikov method. If I'm looking now, my brain gets the energy because light is coming through my eyes. But as soon as I close my eyes, where is the energy coming from? Eurogenital system. The Eurogenital system. So by doing the, the level one exercise, we improve this part. And as soon as I close my eyes, this generator starts to work. It gives energy to my brain. If I don't develop that, it will destroy you. The brain would be drawing energy from the Eurogenital system that isn't there and would physically damage yep. the body as well. That's correct. Right. So that's why the main thing within our method is safety rules. So much for level one. Level two teaches students how to use their psychic powers and magnetic energy fields to bypass their eyes and generate a blank screen in their mind. This they call the psychobiocomputer. And in level three, students learn how to see the real world on that blank screen, even if they're blind. And level three is, is extremely uh, valuable for people who have no eyesight. Because then your brain will see the outside world directly. But back on the course, things didn't seem to be working out so well. Any sensation there? Uh, no. no, nothing changes. Level one is designed to teach us how to generate the energy needed to use the method. We learn how to create balls of energy with our hands, a familiar exercise I've come across before. We rub our hands together and are told to feel the resultant odd sensation in the hands as an energy ball, and one that can then be transferred to and held by another person. I must have really dead hands. Yeah. Why don't you try it with, yeah, you try it yeah. with uh, Judy? Because you're, at least we know that half of it will be... <laughs> Sorry, it really doesn't feel any different. Doesn't matter. What we do, we will move on. So we will... I will go up your hands and we'll take the ball... So I will up. tell you if I feel yeah, it. It's OK, it's OK. OK. Of course, it's one thing to imagine you have an energy, another for it to be real enough to pass on to someone else. So I'm not surprised that we didn't have much success. Now we learned how to use our urogenital areas to generate the energy that would eventually make it possible for us to create a blank screen in our mind, which the Bronikovs call a psychobiocomputer. Judy and Margaret are only taking the level one course, I was allowed to observe the advanced level three. This is the zenith of the method, where we hope to see X-ray vision being developed as the students learn to control the objective outer vision that will help them to see through their blindfolds. Blind or sighted, the course offers this extraordinary possibility to all. 
Knowing what the mind can achieve, I want to look at the evidence and see if this course lives up to its amazing claims. Vladimir communicates with his multilingual audience through translators. Now I watch the level three students performing a key technique known as a splash, releasing the urogenital energy in a seemingly powerful instant. A splash is um, raising the energy from the urogenital system. <laughs> Bring it up. So first you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. and you make a cloth over here. Mm -hmm. you bring it up. And when you have enough pressure in your head, you throw it out very fast. So you open up your eyes very mm -hmm. fast. And then the energy comes out. Yes. Yes. Which is how you prepare the body energetically. As a safety. As a safety. Okay. And you can feel energy coming out. Vladimir was testing in front of people's eyes if there really was a hit. Oh, that's what he was doing. He yeah. was testing. You can feel the hit. I see. And as soon as you have done a level two or level three exercise, mm -hmm. if you put on your mask, you have, you have started your your psycho by computer, and you turn it off, then you end with the splash to come back in this reality in, in, in a normal way. And your brain are in a normal state again. On this first day, I saw no signs of alternative vision. Instead, they worked on remembering large quantities of information in a flash. It was intriguing, but even with this, no one seemed to have any clear success. Our first day of the Bronikov method had felt endless to me, so I wondered what Judy and Margaret had made of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't quite understand what we're supposed to be feeling or mm. what these sort of fields of energy are supposed to be about. Mm. He talks about imagining a ball of energy, feeling a ball of energy, and you can sort of do that to an extent in your head, but then it, it that only goes so far, and then you sort of feel you have to kind of play along a little bit after that. There's a pressure. If somebody's saying, say yes when you feel this energy reach your elbow, yes. Yes. and they're standing there waving their arms around, you just feel after a while you've got to say yes just to... Well, that's right. Yeah. So that, to please them, in to a sense. To please them, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us, what I would call a bit off the wall, yeah. definitely a bit off the wall. But let's see what today brings. Maybe there will be things that begin to make sense of yesterday. Yeah. And what the day held in store was something quite special. Vladimir had agreed to give Judy a diagnosis. Using his skills of alternative vision, he would look inside Judy's body and diagnose her condition. He claims to be able to see right inside her and describe exactly where the problems lie. This I was looking forward to. It could provide actual tangible evidence of those X-ray skills. We were joined by a translator. Yes, it means that he turned on his computer. <coughs> Can I ask what he means by thoracic spine? То мне потом можно будет просто посмотреть грудной отдел находится между шейным и поясничным. Okay. Can I, can I ask if we can direct attention to the around the eyes? No. В целом по кровообращению в эту зону вообще сильно снижен приток крови. Начинается это еще в лобной доле. Там э, венозный застой. Сами глаза как бы активного очага нет никакого. То есть, ну, yeah. как это объяснить? А, ну, активного очага нет. No То есть они очень active zone, active center, let's say. вялые. They are very vexed. А, ткань... На дне она деформированная. Есть рубцы. Функция зрительного нерва 
местами очень снежно до 10-20 процентов So you just had your diagnostics. Diagnostics, I did. What did, I you did. what did you make of it? Very interesting. Okay. Um, some of it was um, self-explanatory. He's seen me in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I wear dark glasses. Mm -hmm. He didn't, as far as the eyes went, to, he didn't actually give us any firm indication that he knew exactly what was wrong with them at all. Yeah. This specific diagnosis gave us a chance to form a verdict on Vladimir's abilities. We could get hold of a chart of Judy's spine and compare it with Vladimir's description. Was he really seeing her spine or not? We arranged to have an X-ray sent to us. The Bronikovs had agreed that we could film the whole course, but later in the day, they'd suddenly change their minds. So it's all been going quite well, but the Bronikos have now said that we can't film the course um, for a couple of days, which is because they want to keep their techniques to themselves. They're worried that somebody might copy them, so, which is fair enough. So um, I'll be attending with Judy, but we won't be filming. Uh, but we can film at the end and catch up then, so we get back in. Although taken aback by the Bronikov's refusal to let us film, I continue to attend the classes. And when my crew is finally allowed back in, we get to see the founder of the method at work, the superhuman figure, revered by so many who has reached the exalted heights of level six and even mentioned that he could levitate and that we could too. I began by asking him how he came up with the method. Actually, my story, I had 12 teachers. I was absolutely loaded with knowledge, overloaded maybe even, but in a very potent way. And you were how old at, at this time? I started from three years old, but if I, if taking it even more seriously, I came consciously into this body. That was my choice. I actually was aware about coming into this life before I actually was born. And when I was born, I had a lot of capacities already. I want to talk about the ball of energy for a moment. Um, when you do this, you feel a tingle in your hands, and you can your muscles sometimes create a sensation, a sensation of, of pulling away. So I can understand how you can imagine that might feel like a ball. I don't understand how you make the leap from an imaginary ball, a sensation in your fingers, to then placing that somewhere where other people can feel it and touch it and, and move it around. I guess you didn't understand anything. When we wrap our hands between two parts of the brain, we create a connection. And this connection actually works and transforms. And everything else is secondary, individual. Everything works inside of the brain. I would love to see the evidence. I really would love to see the evidence. Let your scientists organize in England. They will let them organize the scientific commission. We'll come and it will work. And you will study from the very beginning till the very end. Maybe my problem is, is that I haven't seen somebody who can really look at a box and see something that's inside it. Is it possible? I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to embarrass you, but is it possible for somebody at level six and somebody with your skill to be able to do the test? They were doing a test. They were looking at a box and seeing what was in it. Is it, is it possible? Unfortunately, you form a negative show, documentary. You create problems for yourselves. You don't have scientific approach and you don't have basic knowledge of this technology. I don't understand. Do you understand what you're talking about? What do you want? 
I'm trying to understand. I'm, I suppose maybe I'm being naive, and if I am, I apologize. But but I, I, think I want to see a result. Want to see In the first place, you create advertisements for your own. You show yourself as a not serious organization. Will I be playing circus here, studying boxes and things? This is not serious. You teach people to do this. You want, you want science? Let's do science. You teach this at level three. Yeah. I am not playing anything with you, okay. and I won't prove anything to you. Okay. So there is something called Charles Bonnet syndrome, which is where blind people hallucinate, can hallucinate, and uh, think they are seeing things on the outside world, and it is very convincing for them. Now, it would be, do you think it would be unfair if if blind people were being persuaded that that was actual? real vision when, when it, if it was just a hallucination. We don't do healing here at all. We don't do healing. We deal with human development, and I want to put it straight. If we think about self-improvement, then to me, um, becoming better people is about becoming Kinder, I think, is, is important. Do you think it's kind to tell a 16-year-old boy with cerebral palsy that he will walk and maybe develop superpowers? First of all, we are not talking about healing because we don't heal. Maybe you fix information in the wrong way. I speak of a system of development, and the system of development uh, means that if you create a correct development of certain functions of the brain, you can, you can improve things. We normally want to work with normal, healthy people who use their auto-training techniques for self-development. So I state again, ill people we don't deal with ill people. We're not designed for ill people. This is for doctors only. So the slogan, world without blindness, is that, is that misleading to blind people? Should it be something else? It is working. And the results are there. Is it clear? And I see that you try to find weak spots and guess the weak spots. And I guess it's fine, because you're from England. Rostov-na-Donu, it's a city in Russia. There is a boy, and he was born without his eyeballs. Nobody told him he was blind, and he can see better than you. Think about it. There's a boy in Russia who has no eyes, and he can see perfectly. You're saying that that is true? Definitely, I'm saying what I say. Do you, do you know his name? I'd love to, I, I want to find out about this man. Do you know his name? Well, I don't have this information, only just ask. It's in Rostov-na-Donu, is the city. And this is not the first case. So I've spoken to a, a scientist who says that science doesn't take the Bronikov results seriously, doesn't take the Bronikov system seriously. Why is that, if the results are real? From one point of view, I am pleased that you, in England, still have no understanding of new technology software, scientific, psychological human development. And it's very nice that Russia, Ukraine and Soviet Union are on the first place of the telepathy studying. I just want to ask one, one more thing, just, just going back to this box for a moment, because I want people at home to understand that if it is not appropriate for you to do this, which is fine, I want them to know why, so they understand. We you are not the scientists. Why do you do this? You are not scientists. Okay. You don't deal with proofs, and usually create anti-commercials. And this is your prevail. And you know where you belong. You do what you do. Let's do the anti-commercials. This will not work. And actually, it will not work. For us, anti-promotion is even better than real promotion. Make your documentary. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having us here and allowing us to film with you. And thank you for talking to us. Next time we will participate in your circus. Don't worry. Ah. 
To me, it's important whether the Bronikov's promises are backed up by real abilities. To others, the hope of extraordinary development may be enough, and of course, even false hope can be invaluable. The balance lies in ensuring that the key figures spreading and profiting from the hope are held accountable, so that people searching can make the best informed life decisions for themselves. Saturday as well, but you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. Aries, you're an Aries. Yes, I am. And you dreamt you were married to Alan Titchmarsh. I did. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. I've made a living out of giving the impression that I have paranormal abilities, but I don't. In my work, I use a mixture of magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection, and showmanship. But there are people who do claim to have paranormal abilities. And in this series, I'm hitting the road to see if the extraordinary claims out there are the real deal. My first port of call, Liverpool. Home to the Beatles, Stephen Gerrard, and psychic medium, Joe Power. A man who claims he can communicate with the dead. Among the many he's made contact with is Liverpool's favorite son, John Lennon. <laughs> Joe's been kind enough to allow me to spend the next few days with him. It promises to be extraordinary. He's saying I'm 93. <gasps> He's coming through. Unexpected. Is that he would have hung himself, this person. That, to me, is terrible. And a little bit argumentative. Joe, if you don't stand here and continue the conversation, you're not going to hear what I say in response to that. In today's Britain, anyone can be a medium. You don't need a licence, you don't need any training. All you need is to be able to communicate with the dead. We're off into Liverpool to meet Joe. Joe Power, a medium. The claims that he makes are quite, quite big, quite serious. Would love it to be true. Would love to be blown away by what he does. And I'm really hoping that I'll see and hear stuff that I can't explain. In today's recession, psychic mediumship is a boom industry. Uncertain times mean more and more of us are turning to psychics for guidance and comfort. In cities everywhere, people are knocking on the door of the likes of 42-year-old medium Joe Power. Hello! Hello Mr. Brown, Hello, Hello, Mr. Power. How are you? Very good Come indeed. In. Thank you so much. You look so good much bigger than what I expected. Do you? Yeah. Oh, well, it's good to see you. Bringing your magic powers into here. How are you? All right. Very good. Oh, we've got a gorgeous place. Lived here a long time? Say again, sorry. Have you lived here a long time? About ten years now. Oh, ten years? Yeah. Beautiful. You should know that with your magic powers. Yeah. <laughs> with your mind powers. We'll have a magic off later. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Sugars. Uh, no sugar, just milk be lovely. Just milk. Thank just you so milk. much. Okay. Can I use... Be, ca be careful of them words, because I know in the way that you take us out. Yeah. Anything could be happening. <laughs> yeah, of course you can use the loo. Yeah. Thank you very much. You. Obviously, we'll cut that This is a Mr Brown cup of tea there. But I use my psychic powers to see if he wants a strong or medium. Come on, Mr. Brown, your tea's ready. Very quick, you see. I do, and I fully believe what I do as a medium. Yeah. I know there's charlatans out there, I know there's people being ripped off out there, but I fully believe what I do is contact dead people, and that's what you're going to see this week. Joe's already built a substantial local profile as a medium, with regular radio, newspaper and stage appearances. He could be heading for the big time. But for the moment, like many self-employed mediums all over Britain, a lot of Joe's day-to-day -day work is reading for individuals or families looking to contact their deceased loved ones. Charging as much as £40 a time, Joe's job as a medium is to reveal insights and give messages from the spirit world. And tonight's my first chance to see how he communicates with the dead. Now, you've mentioned sometimes that... I mean, obviously, I will leave you to this and not ask you loads of questions, yeah, but you so mentioned even as approaching a house, sometimes it can... Sometimes I get an energy of certain person coming through. Um, 
feeling straight away that I'm going to be connecting to some type of dad energy, that type of feeling, but I won't know until I have to okay. get in. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Joe Power. For Hi, so Joe's manager put forward several suggestions of new clients who had contacted her. From them, we chose 46-year-old Vanda for Joe to give a reading to. Could I possibly use your loo very quickly? Absolutely. While Joe's in the loo, I want to make sure that Vanda hasn't inadvertently given away personal information already. These are my eldest daughters. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so just so people know, you, you've you written to Joe uh -huh. requesting a reading, but you haven't given any information Absolutely about... Absolutely none whatsoever, because it would be completely pointless. OK, lovely. Um, right. Please sit down. Um, really. You may get a number of people coming through. I don't know until I actually start, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the first thing I picked up as soon as I got to your front door was a gentleman, but I feel it is a father in law in the spirit world. Would that be correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. As soon as I got. Joe's certainly quick out of the psychic starting blocks, making an instant connection with the spirit okay. world. Well, he's. I don't know if he's made me aware of seven kids or seven children, but I'm, 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 I'm aware of seven. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in what? Is that, is that children. you? Yeah. You've got seven children. I've got seven children. Okay, that, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay, and he's mentioned yeah. two young babies that went to the spirit world as well. Oh my God, yes. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Then. Yeah, Absolutely. okay, I'm, I'm just feeling that this gentleman actually coming through. Now, I must be aware is that I'm aware here of a mum coming through from the spirit world. Do you have your mother in the spirit world? Yes. Okay, I just feel like this lady needs to touch her. I feel like she needs to come through. And she, all I can hear is that she's shouting daughter. Okay, and she's telling me that she knows that you've been through a hard emotional time, <sighs> if that makes any sense to you. Yeah. Okay, this lady's a bit wacky. She's giving me pea, pea and ham soup here. <laughs> so I don't know if she likes to have pea and ham soup. But this is the lady that's actually trying yeah. to actually come through. I'm not too quite sure with what she's saying here. I think she's taking me back to 1981. Yeah. I'm seeing Pope John the Paul II. Oh my God. Pope John the Paul II. Would yeah. that make sense Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Okay, could you tell me what that is? Because obviously. Yeah, we went to Crystal Palace to see the Pope. And okay. my mother was so proud because she was thrilled to bits once this Polish Pope had been elected. Well, what is unusual is that I'm seeing a gentleman here and he looks like he's only just gone to the spirit world. He's saying I'm 93, <gasps> 93 years of age, OK? Oh, my God! Would that make sense to yeah? you? Yeah. OK, I'm only feeling around 93 yeah. years of age. He was a friend, but he was a, uh, what should we say, an elderly friend who I used to buy eggs off. There's that many people coming in now, I don't know, you know, you've got a, you've basically got a room through, full of them, yeah? OK, but I'm, I'm more or less happy that your mum's come through to answer your prayers, just to let you know is that she's fine. Nice. And yes, she does think about you all the time, yeah? OK. Right. And with that, I'm going to say God bless with you and thank you. Thank you. Is that OK for you? Yeah, that's thank fine. You. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. That's fine. Oh, it's a bit, a bit emotional sometimes, but... How are you? It was extraordinary listening to it. How are you feeling? Um, I feel as though I've had, um, as though I've been sitting with my mother face to face. I, you know, the reference to the soup, I mean, I mean, she basically, my mother was a gastronomic disaster in the kitchen, but I mean, she did try, you know? So that must have been a... That must have been a good reading for you. I thought it was a fantastic reading. It's, it? um, yeah. it's something that I do from day to day. I can yeah. never, you can never judge a good reading. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that, you know, that's, I feel like I bring comfort to people and I feel like, you know, yeah, I feel good with it. I feel, I feel quite good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I suppose what it comes down to for me is that's either proof of your abilities and what you do is amazing and fantastic or you know, you've got someone to do research on her and it's horrible. So I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, but I do... Uh, obviously, I've been doing this for 10 years Of course, now, and if you're doing and that... it's reputation, yeah, absolutely. and that yeah. is what I do. Never seen the woman before. And when you follow me through the week, I expect you to see the same... The same thing again yeah. and again, yeah. Yeah. If, so, if, it's, if it's people that want to come through. Joe is a psychic medium making claim to a diverse range of talents. 
When not contacting the dead, he lays claim to make aura readings, psychically tapping into people's energy fields to reveal significant insights about them. So I've arranged to take Joe to the Liverpool-based set of the soap opera Hollyoaks to see what the stars make of him. Hollyoaks, isn't it? First actor up, Chris Fountain. Ooh. Hi, Chris. How are you? Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. How are you? All right? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi, Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you know about the, the aura, the surroundings of the magnetic field? So you wouldn't have a... You wouldn't really know what colours I'm picking up. No, about you, would not you? Really. That, but that makes sense to you. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Of what I want. Um, the most prominent colour is I'm seeing red around you at the moment. Mm -hmm. It normally represents legal issues connected to a vehicle. I don't know if you just had some connection to a vehicle. Would that be correct? I got a parking ticket today. Very naughty boy, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, around I'm, you. I'm not seeing this now. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Say it again, sorry. I've been in trouble with my mum now, she sees this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only person that knew about my parking ticket today was my girlfriend. Hello. Hey, Second up, 23 year old Anthony Quinlan. Hi, Anthony, I'm Joe. How are you? All right. You, nice Joe to meet you. Well. You're all right. Have a, have a seat. Um, originally, when you've just walked in, I was going to say you were one of three, and then I dropped it to two. How many is in your family? There's only one. Okay. And I just want to take you back a, a little bit. Was there an incident with an accident with a bike? I really can't think. OK, if I took you back to around 14... I really can't think. OK, keep thinking for me. OK, now I am aware of a lady coming through here connected to a grandmother, would there be three sisters? Yeah. Yes, because she is standing directly behind you now, OK, and she wants to congratulate you on what you're doing at this present time. OK, she's just disappeared and she's just gone. Thanks very much for speaking to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. How did you find that? Just amazing, absolutely. It's, that's the only thing I wanted to hear you say. That's the only thing I wanted to hear you say. She was there for you. That's mental. That is mental. <laughs> I'm absolutely shattered. It's been suggested that I try the next one. Come on, Darren. <laughs> OK. Time for a spot of non-psychic mind reading. And my sitter nice is the instantly arresting Claire Cooper. Hi, How are you? Nice All right. You. I'm good, nice thank to you. meet you. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. OK, so... One of the reasons why I've avoided pretending to be psychic during my career is that I sort of find it a bit embarrassing and a bit excruciating telling people how they should be or what's going to happen to them, because I think all those things are not, not helpful to tell people. Um, so I'm having just, I'm just, I have to sort of give myself permission to do this, because I, otherwise I'll, I'll feel bad. But anyway, um, what I see in you is a soft centre with a very hard armour shell on the outside. Does that make any sense to you first? We'll yeah. Be yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, Relationship-wise, uh, as I'm saying this, you're thinking back to a recent relationship that I think was, was troubled and was difficult and was lovely, but when it ended, there, were, there was a lot of heartbreak at the end. Um, you went on holiday with this guy and, and it was a lovely time, but it didn't, quite, it didn't solve what this thing was. Is that...? Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, is it the Maldives? Yes. Yes. It Lovely. Was. Never been there, but yeah. it's it's that image I got of pockets of pockets of sand and lots and lots of water. Yeah. It's the only image I have of it. Um, we move on from that. You wouldn't have dogs. You'd have cats. <laughs> yes. Um, and they would be, I think, quite nice pedigree cats. I think uh, you'd probably go for a sort of bluey, silvery, those sorts of things. I don't know much about. I'm a dog person, but does that connect? Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, then that's all I think that's all I think I can say. Thank you. Can you tell me your thoughts on that? We've been asking people afterwards what Yeah, it was really, really good. Was it? Uh, yeah, really impressed. I've got two British blue cats. That's really amazing you picked up on that, especially the colour. And uh, yeah, I've kind of broke off a relationship recently. Mm-hmm. Um we went to the Maldives, but it was kind of all a bit, you know. So yeah. 
How did you, how did you feel? Um, I don't do it very often because I, I um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not remotely psychic at all. And I, but I, I, I find there's an interesting crossover between what I do mm -hmm. and what Joe does. And, and, and how old are you, Claire? Twenty-eight. Did you have a mini at one time. I've got one now. You've got one now. You drive a mini. Yeah. Um, and your cat is the paw OK on one of them? Has there been a little bit of bother? Mishka had a problem with one of her paws, one of her claws. But I like to come up with facts. Thank you so much. I know we've oh, kept you for too long. Absolutely so. fine. Thank you uh, for having me. Uh, nice oh, to meet you. I forgot to say about the affair. What affair? Oh, it doesn't matter, really. No, tell me. <laughs> no, no, tell me. You can't no. do that. <laughs> no, go on, no, go on. Okay. 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 Leave that for no, a no, 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 don't leave. You just keep travelling in your mini. That so basically, tough. I could have just been picking that up from the auric field, which mm. it's stored within the mag magnetic field, and I wouldn't be a person that would leave you in limbo thinking. You were, you know, something was going on. No, but you were, because you were just going to yeah. say, don't think about the affair, and then you're going to No, because go. you were putting me on the spot, Darren. Well, no, you said that yourself, Darren. and you were going to leave yeah. in limbo on that. So. No, I wasn't. Well, as long as you got your hits, but that was oh. quite a nice thing it's to say. It's not hits, it's well, no, facts. No, but it is, that's because it's what, it's just... It's facts. As soon as I say that, you bring it back to that I was facts. quite good, wasn't it's I? It's facts. But, yeah. Thank you again. Sorry to Pleasure. I thought you'd draw that. It's, it's all right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And you as well. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Claire. Bye. By observing you today, there is no doubt is that you are not working on a psychic level. Psychic level. But she's going to go away from that. She could go. She could have gone away from that, believing I was psychic. I think if I'd have told yeah. her I was psychic, yeah. she'd have she'd have believed that. And I could have given her some advice. I could have framed it in terms of a spirit t telling me these things. You know, a, a grandmother telling me these things, rather than me sort of being a bit more honest about how I was getting it. The it's difference funny. between me and you, yeah. I come up with facts. Just shows that every psychic's different, and they. They work very, very differently. And I think Darren is psychic. I think he is. I'm starting to see why mediums like Joe have such appeal. People want to believe he's in contact with their dead loved ones. It brings them a huge amount of comfort. And she feels like she's touched her daughter. And no matter what happens during the reading, they want to give him the benefit of any doubt. She wants to congratulate you. There was a case with uh, Anthony, who was a cast member on Hollyoaks. Joe gave him a lot of information that sort of kept missing, really. It didn't feel like a good reading at all. And after a series of those misses, he finally said there's a grandmother that's come through. Connected to a grandmother. Which is kind of obvious that he'd have a grandmother who died. But the fact that he wanted that, that he wanted to have that contact with his grandmother, that was enough to validate the whole thing, to the extent that immediately after he was saying it was an amazing reading, purely because he'd been told his grandmother had come through. Just amazing, absolutely. It's, that's the only thing I wanted to hear you say. The dilemma for me is, I'm kind of interested in taking a step back and going, well, is there any evidence for it? But you realise when you look at you look at what's happening in these readings, no one cares about particularly about the evidence. They just want to be told that that their loved ones are still there. And the moment you even the slightest, faintest implication that may have not been quite what it seemed is hurtful um, uh, and you know horrible for them. And of course, it's much more likely to be angry at, at me for suggesting that than they are at, at Joe. But there are some common themes already emerging in Joe's claims of contacting the dead. And my driver, Lee, has noticed one in particular, Joe's use of numbers. So, Lee, Lee, uh, Joe did a reading for you. Yeah. How was that reading? It was uh, quite scary, really. It seemed quite accurate at the time. What, what were, give me a couple of things you said to you that... Um, I'm from a family of four. Which okay. I assumed it was just meant brothers and sisters. Right. But he mentioned that to somebody else, and he meant yeah, like mum and dad as well. So you counted it without mum and dad? Yeah. Did for... yeah. you have a Mini at one time? I've got one now. You've got one now, you drive a Mini. Yeah. What's more, Lee oh, saw something before me. Claire's reading, which might be significant. <laughs> when you did come in and listen to some of the readings, you heard Joe tell Claire uh, that she drove a Mini. But what did you tell me afterwards? Because that was quite interesting. Well, um, when he was outside with his car, um, Claire actually drove past in a Mini Cooper and pulled up alongside him, got out of the car and walked past into the building. Now, of course, Joe may not have seen the Mini, so I shall have to ask him. But something about which there's no doubt is that Joe does have a whole lot of ambition. Tonight, he's invited me along to what's considered the next step up any psychic medium's career ladder, a sellout show. 
And this is the first psychic show I've ever been to. And it's a bit of a surprise. Given the show is all about contacting the dead, I was expecting a sombre audience. But this lot, 250 people paying £10 each, are anticipating a bit of entertainment. Time for Joe to meet his public. Do you know I can actually look into your life like a book and open it up and open a page and have a look at your secrets? I'm going to be contacting the alleged spirit world. Is everyone up for that? Yeah. For the next two hours, Joe's taking this willing crowd into his world. I've got two people coming through. Where am I? Where are we? Two people? He's saying he's got his marbles back. Thank God. And they love him. He's For them, Joe's the worth the price on the he ticket is. as he delivers hit. There was a rat in his house. Thank you. <laughs> After hit. I don't know if he's like, would be 38 or. 38. 38, thank you very much. But interspersed with the showmanship are stories of real tragedy. There's been a lot of heartache in this room. But the main person is the person that's being crushed, OK? He needs to let you know is that he's fine. In the vehicle... The many stories of suicides and violent deaths bring home the intimate level at which these people are allowing Joe to tread. He carries a real responsibility as he involves himself in their memories. OK, you've got two suicides, yeah? Your son was murdered. Um, the first husband committed suicide as well. OK, does one of them know Gary? OK, is that he passed through a suicide. She's mentioning cocaine, she's mentioning drugs. Is that he would have hung himself, this person? It makes me feel sad and uncomfortable. And I wonder what's more important. Just let you know, is that they're OK? Whether Joe's actually psychic or whether he brings comfort. OK, OK, I'm, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave Michelle with you. She's absolutely fine. She's happy. Oh, yeah. Thanks, OK, thanks. God bless you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh... I thought he was really good, really accurate. I thought he was great. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah, he is very good. Yeah. Whatever you try to do, you try to, with me, is try to keep the audience uplifted because you've got a lot of people mm. grieved in the audience and different things. It'll just be my natural way of work and, you know, sometimes serious, sometimes a little bit uplifting and then, you know, changing from time to time. Where would you imagine yourself in five, five years' time? What would you love to be doing with this? I would like to be doing shows in front of, say, two and three thousand people because I feel I make a lot stronger connections than other people that are performing yeah. out there now. But I am a bit surprised to discover that some of the people Joe read for tonight have had readings with him before, albeit some time ago. He's, he's actually given me the same reading um, last year, about 12 months ago. I have, I have had a reading off him before, but it was a long time ago. We've been to an open circle before um, with Adam. You've seen him before privately, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And she has a different wow. And everything that he says is always spot on. Spot on. Joe says that people are going to follow him regularly if they like psychic performances and will have seen more than one show. Do another one because the waiting to go OK, ready? One, two. Tonight's audience certainly believe Joe was communicating with the dead. I'd love it to be true as well, but I've got my doubts. And Joe's not going to like them. I want to shake your hand. Are you fake? No, I'm 100% not a fake. What I do as a medium is 100% genuine. But while he could be, there is another way of achieving similar results. And I'll let you into a secret. It involves one of the many techniques I use when I'm on stage. It's called cold reading. And she's still got tears in her It allows you to give the impression you know personal details about people you've only just met. And she's fine on your side. Okay, Professor Richard Wiseman, who attended last night's show, is an expert in studying claims of paranormal abilities. I met him for a second opinion on how cold reading could be used. Okay, so it, that's, my that's your grandson. What Joe is doing, um, I, I think, is impressive in the sense that he's standing on stage and getting people to say, yes, my goodness, you, know, you seem to be in contact with, with somebody in the spirit world. The question is, is he doing that through some kind of psychological cold reading technique, or is it genuine? You're never going to know for certain. 
If Joe is cold reading, he would first have to make the connection. Here you convince a bereaved spectator that you have a link to a loved one in the spirit uh, no world. I'm linking to her is her name is Jean. So what's okay, better than mentioning a name? Clear, and I know that there's someone should be connecting to this lady. Good bloody start. OK. As I'm but if that doesn't work, you just try another that name. Is Debbie. That should be linked to this lady. It's my auntie and cousin. And hey, okay, presto, you you've made the connection. People in the spirit world. Yeah. And you should bear with me one moment. OK. So it's, it's an interesting start there. Uh, he comes out and he says, um, absolutely crystal clear, I'm looking for a gene. And there's not much of a response there, so it becomes then it's Debbie as well. If you listen to the actual words, actually Jean has vanished yeah. from it. Now, is this lady only just passed? But with the audience member now hooked, okay, so there's still work to do. You've got to reveal world. facts the about them and their dead okay, loved ones. You'll be the right connection. You stay with me a second. So next up, the sitter does the work. Oh, God, you said Jean before. It'll yeah. be Joan. She, she's over there in the audience. Where is she? That's another sister. So this is the, the sitter doing all the, the work. Okay. Um, so he came out and said, Jean, oh, and now I've worked it out. You mean Joan, mm. who's alive over there. So it's, it's the, the sitter doing the work. Mm. Is it Paul? Paul? I don't know if that was one of his friends. You may need to... Um. Um, he had a partner, Pauline. OK. Now, There's also that sense of throwing out a lot of options. So they're trying to fit this information, they're dropping away the stuff that doesn't make sense, they're picking up and getting the, the psychic to elaborate on the stuff that does. So it involves a back and forth. OK, where's the family of five of you then? Is it this five? I need to Nowhere is this more apparent than when the audience has to work hard to make sense of the numbers. OK, why don't you mention them five then? Is he like... Five obvious, or is it five connections? So there he says, I'm getting a figure five. And she says, yeah, five girls and a boy. Mm -hmm. Or some might refer to it, six. Six, yeah. So, so, again, he might be right. He might be right, maybe. It was five girls and the spirits were whispering that to him and, and he just mm -hmm. couldn't quite make sense of it. <clears throat> or it could just be a number that's thrown out there and it's her job to make to it. To make it, it. it. Is it five connections? Five girls and a boy. Sometimes, rather than throwing specific information at the audience to work out, cold reading also allows you to deal with generalities. So next up, Barnum statements. Comments that could apply to many people. OK, how's your knee? Not too good. He's talking about your knee, love. Yes, OK, you've had problems with it. Yeah. And is it your hip as well? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and saying to a lady of a certain age that she has a, a, a dodgy knee or hip is what we call a Barnum statement, isn't it? From P.T. Barnum, who said there's something for everyone. It's a phrase that can clearly apply to a lot of people in that situation, although it sounds very specific in the, the way that it's delivered. But out of all the cold reading techniques, my personal favourite is the recap. I just felt... Here you tell the audience something they've just told you. or Catherine. Her name's Catherine, a sister, but we call her Kissy. And one minute, 22 seconds and 23 frames later... Well, I want to keep talking to you, and you mentioned the name of Kitty, didn't you? Not yeah. me, yeah. because I'm hearing that again, by the way. She, it's, like, it's as if, like, it's a nickname. Well, her name's Catherine, but everyone calls her Kissy. Ah, oh, because she's saying nickname. OK, yeah. so it's a, it's a nickname that we used to call her. He's already heard that. She's already told him that. I, I believe that's the case. So this yeah. is a, a kind of recapping. But, of course, if you don't remember the beginning part of the, the reading, which is when he was explicitly told that, you could look at that and think, oh, my goodness, how on earth did he come up with that information? And the answer is he was told it fairly early on. And could this be another one? There's three people that I need to connect to. Yeah, it was my cousin. There was three of them in a car. It was two killed? Yeah. She two said cousin. Killed. Yeah. OK, I, I need and what's to speak to because I'm feeling that these these two people... Was one, like, a cousin, though? Was the, was the yeah, it was my cousin. It was your cousin? Yeah. OK, does the name of Jimmy connect... But we're all human, your... and sometimes you do get the information wrong. No. No? No. no. Don't know what that is. But okay. if it is going wrong, there's a solution, and it's called the blame game. You can blame the spirits, I felt his energy, but I'm not convinced that I'm talking to him. <laughs> so I'd rather let you sit down if that's okay. Or you can blame the audience if the information the doesn't quite ring true. Okay, she's I saying yes, she was in the hospital. Yeah, she hospital. was a while back. I 
I don't know. She may have been. Okay, you you may need to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's never I'm I'm wrong. It, it's simply that now you have to go and investigate that because you know we've got to find out more information about it. Do you know if there's an anniversary or <laughs> birthday that falls on the twenty third? Um, think about it. I can't think. Well, I can, love. So, okay. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit faster. Yeah. Okay. And if, and if you're saying no, it can be left with you as a sitter. Well, think about it. Go away and think about it. In other words, it, I'm, it's, right, it's, I'm it, right. Yeah. And you're wrong. No, no, until it's you find my it. problem. Right. Right. And I, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Now, none of this is to say that this isn't genuine. Yeah. What we're saying is, there's just other ways of looking at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'm going to say good night and God bless. Thank you. The end of the show. Joe could be communicating with the dead, but my discussion with Professor Wiseman explains how similar results can be obtained through cold reading. Joe himself emphatically denies using any of these techniques, saying he solely uses what he terms as his gift of mediumship. What you would have is your cynics on one side going, well, that's it, you know, it's all cold reading, and your believers on the other kind of going, no, 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 it's all genuine. But I think that these abilities actually exist, there is only one way to find out whether they're real or not, and that is to do some kind of test. Before we started filming, Joe agreed in principle to undertake a scientific test. Formulated independently by Professor Wiseman, the basic idea was to have Joe read for some people that he couldn't see or talk to, and this would eliminate the possibility of cold reading. He'd have to rely purely on what the spirits wanted to say, and he wouldn't be helped by any information the sitter fed to him. But as the week went on, Joe felt the test was unfair to his particular style of mediumship, and he didn't want to do it. So we were going to be doing the test today, which you have said you'd rather not do. You know, the point of the test was to show that it isn't just cold reading, or isn't just this, or isn't just that. I'd have thought you'd have welcomed the chance to show that it was real. So what's, what's, your, what's your reasons for...? A dog wouldn't take that test. Right. It was designed for failure, because I am a clear audience. Right. And I need to have voice reaction, I need to have communication in order for the spirit people to come through. What happens is that I've got an energy field mm. and a spirit has an energy field, mm -hmm. but they haven't got a voice box. Right. Okay, so they need to... I need to have dialogue yeah. with the other person. So if you, if you wanted to test another medium mm -hmm. and you wanted to check that they weren't... Just say you weren't sure if they were cold reading or whether they were genuinely doing it, so you wanted to sort of remove the possibility of cold reading, what, what sort of... How would you, how would you test it? Because that's, that's what we're so... Well, I, I, I would know... Me, you just know. I would know straight away. Okay. I've been in churches where I've seen a mm. medium standing on the platform and he says, I've got your mother here, and I know that he hasn't because the father's standing behind them. In the way that Joe has backed out of the test, he's, he's found a description for how he does it that means you can't test it because you can't remove any of the other possibilities. It's the equivalent of him saying, I've got a UFO in the garden, you can come and look at it, but it's invisible. You can't see it or touch it, so you've still got to believe me. You've still got to believe. There is no way of testing whether there's a UFO there or not. You've just got one bloke that says it's there. But if Joe won't do a scientific test, he has agreed to do a second one-on-one -on -one reading. In his first reading with Wunder, he scored hit after hit. This time I wanted to arrange a reading which was independently organised by us. A woman called Roz answered an ad I put in the local paper and agreed to be read by Joe. Hi, Roz. Hi. Hello. I've asked her to use a fictitious name and an address other than her own. Most people, when they go into a reading, say they're kind of a bit sceptical, they don't know. What, what are your thoughts at the moment? Do you believe in, the, in this kind of thing? Uh, I'd like to believe in it, and part, well, 99% of me, yeah, and there's 1% um, doubtful. Can I ask you as well, if you don't mind telling us, we know you have you have had a loss in your life because mm. that's why that's why we have a meet. Can you just tell us the, the details of what happened? Is that all right? Yeah, it was um, our older sister. Mm -hmm. um, she developed uh, breast cancer, which was on it was being treated and it was um, looking good. Mm -hmm. And then it just came back with revenge when Elaine was alive. And the three of us made a pact that if one something happened, one of us died. Yeah. Um, the person who died would find a way of getting through to the other two of us. Because um, I'm sure if there's a way, she will definitely find it. So Roz is not sceptical, and she's genuinely seeking contact. We've just changed her name and address. 
I've left Roz, or Pam as we're calling her, to collect Joe for the reading. So far, I've seen no real evidence to confirm that Joe is communicating with the dead. But in the next few minutes, if Joe scores hit after hit as he did before, it'll help persuade me that he is the real deal. There you go. Right. Oh, oh sorry. Sarah, come on. We gave you some. OK. Um, so... Let's go in. Yes. Let's do Did he know who you are? Have um, you been in the house before? I've, I've said I've said a hello. We turned up and I said a hello. But, yeah. Uh, so you've been in, you've you've met these people. I have I have briefly met them. Yes, I have. Thank yeah. you. I want to go the the new face before I've seen these people. Okay. For me, this is Joe's moment. I shall sit. I'll sit here. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, Pam, Joe, Joe, Hi, Pam. Pam. Nice to meet you. Hi, Joe. All right, thank Hi. you. Now, I'm aware of a gentleman actually coming through. Um, it feels more like a father in the spirit world. OK, do you have a dad in the spirit world? Yes. Yes, OK, I felt your dad, as soon as I come through the room, mm -hmm. wanted to try and come through and say hello to you. OK, um, I don't know if he's saying two children connected but there was meant to be three. How many children do you have? Two. Two. It's it, something to do with two children. Yes. But there should have been three children. Mm -hmm. Would that make sense? To you? Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. And you have obviously that child is in the spirit world now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you come here to try and communicate and bring this child through? No, not the child. Okay, no. that's fine. Don't worry about it. Now I'm also aware of a lady coming through as well. I'm pretty sure is that it was connected to a mum. Would she have been one of five? Uh, yes. Yes, because she talks about there's five of us. Yeah? OK, she keeps talking about a separation here, a divorce. OK, and I don't know whether this is connected to do with you or there was some type of split up um, going back quite a while. No. Okay, why did she mention 17 years ago then? Is the Jimmy or James connected? No. She's saying yes on grandfather's side? No. Okay, maybe have a think about it. It may come back a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel it's connected to the five. Where, which was connected to your mum when she said it was one of five. OK, mm. so it may go back a long time ago. Sometimes you can't think because the mind has to think a lot beforehand, yeah? yeah? OK, because I've never met you, I've never seen you before, and as soon as I come in, I knew it was that your father was waiting here for you, and I knew it was that your mum was waiting, and I knew it was that I wanted to ask you for a little bit of information, and she said five, five of them. Mm -hmm. So you would know that was your mother coming through. Other than that, I'm going to say God bless and thanks for speaking to me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, there's one particular person that I know was trying to get through to me. OK, don't worry about that. There may be a person trying to come through, but sometimes the spirit spiritless people will come through in their own time. They said if there's a way of coming through, they will find it. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I thought, you know, you might be that person. Yeah, but maybe I'm not the right person all the time. I can't, I can't guarantee no. I can go to one place and bring a certain person through. Mm. So I wouldn't be too disappointed. I'd be happy that someone is coming through. Mm. Yeah. Um, can I just ask you as well? I know you, you seem disappointed. Is the Paul connected with you? Um, Paul? We have a Paul, yeah. OK, as in the living world? Living world, yeah. Yeah, OK, because you're... Obviously, Mum is talking about Paul. It's OK. I, I, you don't mind me asking, I don't know if he's a cousin or someone quite close to you. Uh, in law. In law, Paul in law. What does um, my mum want to say about Paul? She, I, 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 I don't, all I know at the moment is that there was some type of connection with Paul. I don't know if there's been a, some, some spot of bother or something happened around Paul, but I know is that she was specifically talking of a Paul. Mm. No, that doesn't make any sense. OK, that's fine, that's fine, mm. yeah. 
I was hoping for something more definite. How, um, how you managed to come in and have a reading? How was it arranged? Yeah. I, I um, applied to have a reading done. To who? To the advert. OK, and who answered the phone? Uh, I can't think of hand now, which person... OK, which have you met me? Darren before, have you? No, never. He's just said he's just been in your house. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, morning. yeah, this morning, yeah. Office. I meant not before so today. So, you, so, you, so, you, so you've met Darren? Yes, yeah, so You know Darren is a, is a sceptic, and you just said that you haven't seen Darren before, and well, he's been uh, in the no, house no, before, and I've just come in. You just no. told me, Darren, that you haven't been here. So we haven't only met asked him before. today. I've mm. only met him today. So you'd rather we hadn't met at all? That would that would have. Of course, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm quite happy. Your mum's come through. Mm. She talked about the five kids. Okay, that is good enough for me. But five kids. Five. She was one of five. Oh, she was one of five. One of five. Yeah. yeah. Right. But you seem to be trying to, as if I need to prove to you. No, I'm very open-minded. I was hoping. Yeah. No, no, very open-minded. Yeah. No. But that's why I, I would have preferred not meeting Darren Brown. No, no. So anyway, no, I'm no, going to no, say no, thank you with that. Okay. And thank you, Carlos. Thank, thank you. you. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Okay, talk to me. You, you seem unhappy. Well, I'm unhappy because you told me a blatant lie. Which and was? The, you told me that you had not been in this house. I told you I had been in that house. No, you told me you had not been in this house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you've been in, you've, you've met these people. I have, I have briefly met them, yes, I have, Thank yeah. you. So is that, don't you think that's absolutely terrible? That, to me, is terrible. Joe, if you don't stand here and continue the conversation, you're not going to hear what I say in response to that. You've been in the house, you're supposed yeah. to be a famous person, you was never meant to be in that house. Joe, I'm going to be honest with you, it seems like if you do a it bad reading, like you blame me. everybody it else other like than yourself. Me, it's her that, fault, it's, it's, it's my it's, fault, it and it's not your it fault. It is, you shouldn't have gone into the house, it was corruption. What to do with it, Joe? Corruption. Make a difference. Make a difference. Corruption. That is absolutely terrible. Bad showmanship, Darren. Bad showmanship. I don't know what... OK, you, so you think by, by me being in there and being sceptical, yeah, that no, makes her more sceptical? No, no, yes. You've got to draw a fine line of be, what is yeah. real and what is sick. Yeah. Yeah, and some of the things what I do is real because I am touching people, right, and in a nice things? way. Yeah. And sometimes when you push overboard yeah. and you're taking literally the piss out of sceptics and mediums when there's real gifted people out there, OK, that's when it draws a line. As I said, I'm quite disappointed in the outcome. Okay. It was nothing to do with um, you. Mm -hmm. you know, there was no influence from you whatsoever. I mean, from, from watching him, it feels like if he... If, he, if things start to go a bit wrong, he'll keep bringing back up the information that he got right, and he kept bringing up, kept going back to the five. That yeah. there were, she was one of five, five kids, so he kept coming back to that. And yeah. So did she have five? Were well, there, were think about it now afterwards. Sorry, it was six. <laughs> oh, it was six? Yeah. yeah. I said a uh, quick count on my fingers, and I thought five, then including my mum, would have been So six. she was one of six, not one of five? No, one of six, yeah. For me, my time spent with Joe has come down to a tale of two very different readings. One, a great success. And another, which didn't go so well. Wanda's reading was a very, very good reading, and it wasn't cold reading. Um, you can tell because cold reading always follows a certain pattern, a pattern of throwing out information, letting the other person make it fit, and then kind of taking credit for it yourself as a psychic. And he certainly wasn't doing that. He was giving information. He's saying I'm 93. <gasps> and it was a very, very different situation with the second lady. Is the Jimmy or James connected? No. In my opinion, it looked like cold reading and bad cold reading. And he says that that was invalid because I'd said hello to this woman before and that my mere presence there would have made her more sceptical. I actually don't really see why that would stop her relatives who loved her from coming through. I still don't really see why that would make it not work. And I think you're left with the same either or. Either he is, he is genuine, and all this is just very unfortunate, he's just had a bad week, but he is genuine, in which case there's a lot more questions to be asked. It's uh, a fascinating thing that we should embrace and look more closely at, or he's a fake. You know, and he's not just doing not just doing card tricks, he's involving himself with people who are bereaved and, and, and vulnerable. If, that's, if that is what he's doing, that is an insult not only to the memory of the deceased, but also to the dignity of the bereaved. It's now my last night in Liverpool, and time for a final chat with Joe. Top of the agenda, the contrast between the two readings. 
if the spirit world don't want to make contact, mm -hmm. you know, then okay. we don't compare. Of so course. you can't compare one reading that it's a good reading and one reading that is a bad reading. Of course. Yeah, and it, spirit world doesn't work like that. All right. And, and course, you wouldn't yeah. know that, would you? Because you don't have these... <clears throat> Ability no. to know, but I have other abilities and other knowledge, yeah. and that's what I'm bringing to. Yeah. I'm not bringing to it a knowledge of how the spirit works. That's that's your area. What mm. I am bringing is a knowledge of cold reading and how people can fake and how people mm. can be fooled. Um, do you have a mini at one time. I've got one now. You've got one now. You drive a mini. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you said in your reading to Claire. I don't know that she drove. Claire, Claire was the last girl. Remember, I did I did a reading, a sort of a fake reading. No, I said I was picking up a mini. That's right. And that's she right. said she drove a mini. That's right. Yeah, which was great, and it was a, a good hit. Yeah, and right, uh, yeah. and um, and then I found out that she'd pulled up next to you in her mini outside in the in oh, the parking lot. Well, now you are really crutch clutching at straws. I mean, this is probably the worst. I think before you make accusations yeah. of me, um, I, I'm not. I'm, I want. I want no, 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 no. I'm quite disgusted in that uh, you've come to stoop this low. Which is totally fabrication on so your behalf. So she didn't behalf. turn up in the mini. I don't know. I've never seen her. Oh, that's never this is seen what, her. It's what I want to find out. Yeah, but I'm quite shocked that you've even you've even gone to that extreme. Okay. okay well, we could go on about this. I mean, you. But, but you it's important. You, it's yeah, important. Yeah. There's a difference okay. between you're really connecting with those people yeah. and you're sort of trampling on their memories yeah. and in, insulting oh, oh. the bereaved and the deceased. No, no, no. You're insulting. The people out there, the believers, you only have an opinion. Darren, we've had I a good have, week. I have to present you we've with had this a good so you week. can respond to Okay, it. we've had a good week. I'm going to shake your hands. Are you a fake? No, I'm 100% not a fake. You, and you, you do know, you, do you, you really know believe? deep down, right? Are you, me, are, are you genuinely channeling dead people? I am people? generally channeling dead people. Did you do research on any of those people? No, I did not do any research whatsoever on any can single person. Can you sleep person. at night? Are you happy I can with what sleep you're doing? very, very well every single night. You can look at yourself yeah. in the mirror. You're I happy can look at world. you and I can look at you 100% in the eyes and tell you what I do as a medium is 100% genuine. Yeah? I have to let the viewers make up their mind. Thank and you. it's a pleasure working with you. My time with medium Joe Power has involved gauging whether or not he's real. But I'm left considering another question. Maybe the comfort mediums offer is more important than where it all comes from. I'm unable to believe Joe actually contacts the dead, but I have learnt it's a far more complex business than I'd imagined. After I finished filming with Joe, something came up concerning his reading with Vonda. Joe's always maintained he'd never met her before, which Vonda has confirmed, and Joe told us she did not give him any information. Joe has always said he did not know any of her details, but what I've discovered is that Vonda's next door neighbour is in fact Joe's sister. Now I asked Joe for clarification. Joe said that he had been surprised to find out that Vonda lived next door to his sister. And he went on to say that since he's read for many people in that particular area of Liverpool and that particular street, he put it down to no more than a mere coincidence. 